All right, in this video, we're going to talk about mass spectroscopy. So before we dive into this, let's review a couple of definitions or terms that you should be familiar with. Um, the first is isotope. So isotopes are atoms of the same element with a different number of neutrons. So we can explain isotopes by talking about mass number. So mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if you recall, Protons and neutrons are the subatomic particles that have the most mass. Yes, electrons have mass, but their mass is so small that it's really insignificant. The protons and neutrons are the two particles that really determine the overall mass of an atom. So here are three examples, hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, and hydrogen 3. So we have hydrogen 1, we have hydrogen 2, and we have hydrogen 3. Okay, all of these are hydrogen, so they're all going to have one proton. Okay, hydrogen 1 has a mass number of 1, it's not going to have any neutrons. Okay, so when we add these two up, we get a mass number of 1. Hydrogen 2 is a mass number of 2, so it's going to have one neutron for a total mass of 2. Hydrogen 3 has one proton. So it's going to have two neutrons for a total mass of three. Okay, so if you notice, all three of these are hydrogen, so they're all going to have one proton, but they have a different number of neutrons, okay, which is the definition of an isotope. All right, average atomic mass resembles the most abundant isotope, and when we get into mass spectroscopy, you'll, you'll see how this works. So chlorine has an average atomic mass of 35.45 atomic mass units. That's what you see on the periodic table. That's the average atomic mass. All right, so here's mass spectroscopy. Mass spectroscopy is a technique used to justify isotopes of an element and their relative abundance in nature. Okay, so we've got a graph here to the right. Each bar represents a different isotope. So I know this is a little blurry, but we've got one bar here and we have one bar here. Those are the different isotopes. The height of the bar represents the relative abundance. Okay, so if you look at our y-axis, it talks about percent abundance. So I would want to follow the very top of my bar over to the y-axis and that would tell me my relative abundance. Now the x-axis, if you look here, um, it's labeled mass to charge ratio, but it can be labeled a couple different things. It could be labeled mass to charge, it could be labeled m over z, or it could be atomic mass. Okay, Whatever it's labeled, we always want to treat it as the atomic mass. So let's look at an example. It says, what is the average atomic mass of this element. And we've got a bar graph here. Okay, so the way we approach this is we are going to take every single bar. Okay, so we've got 76, 77, 78, 80, and 82. So we have one, two, three, four. We have five different isotopes. So we had 76, we have 77. 78, uh, 80, and 82. Okay, now we're going to have to use a little bit of estimation here. So we want to follow the top over to our y axis and kind of estimate where we end up. Okay, some of these are going to be a little bit easier than others. Some of them might be a little trickier, especially if I'm looking at the bottom three, they're all pretty close. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here. So 76, uh, if we look at 76, 76 is less than 0 0.1. Um, so let's say maybe like 0 0.096. So we're gonna multiply the mass by the abundance. OK, 
Okay, 77 is less than that. Um, let's see, it's one, two, three ticks past. So let's say 0 0.078. Okay, 78. Taking a look here at 78, it is not quite halfway between 0.2 and 0.3. It's a little less. So how about 0 0.0, oops, 0.238. Okay, 80 is pretty much right on the line, 0.5. So let's let's keep that one easy. And 82, okay. 82 is almost right on the line there too. Um, how about 0 0.082? And these are just estimations. Okay, so I'm going to multiply all of these individually. So when I do 76 by 0 0.096, I get 7.32. I'm just going to go ahead and fill these in. 6.01, 18.6, let's see, 40.0, and 6.64. Okay, so that's the abundance multiplied by the mass, and then I just add these up. So when I do that, I get 78.5. Seven. Okay, so if I go to my periodic table and look this up, so I'm going to use p-table here, uh, we said 78.57, 78 78.57, if I look at the periodic table right here, selenium is really close to that, so I would identify this because the question asks, what's the average atomic mass of this element? 78.57 is our answer, and the closest one would be selenium. All right, let's take a look at another example. It says identify the element and the number of neutrons in the atom represented by the peak at 74 atomic mass units in the spectrum. All right, so we're going to kind of do the same thing here. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and if you look, 74 is what it's asking us about. So it's not actually asking us for the average atomic mass here, it's just asking us to figure out like what element it is. So I could go through and I could do the same process where I could take each mass and multiply it by the abundance, or I could just kind of estimate here. So I'm just looking at these and it looks like the mass is gonna be, so like between 72 maybe and 74, the average would be somewhere in here, somewhere between 72 and 74. Um, so if I look at my periodic table between 72 and 74, so 72 and 74, so it's either germanium or arsenic, 74 looks like it's almost 75, so that's too high, so germanium looks like it's going to be the closest, which is 32. Okay, so if it has a mass number of 74, that's going to be equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So I would just need to do a little bit of subtraction here. 74 minus 32 is 42 neutrons. So this is going to be germanium and it's going to have 42 neutrons. Um, because we're looking at 74 here, okay? So 74 would be the mass number of the isotope. So again, we just kind of worked backwards. We use the mass number of the isotope. We knew that it's going to be 32 protons because we 
um, figured out that it was germanium. We used a little bit of estimation. Like I said, you could have done the same thing where you did every single mass times the abundance. Um, but this case, it was pretty obvious that it was going to be between 72 and 74, somewhere in there. So we used a little bit of estimation and then we just figured out how many neutrons we had. And that's it. So you can do the math if you want. You can estimate if it's easy. Um, but either way works. And that's mass spectroscopy.